I'm getting down to under a thousand and notice how it is climbing, climbing. Let's see if we hit 80%. I mean, yeah, look at that, 80, 90%, 93%. And we're still charging at over a thousand watts. Hey folks, today I'm going to attempt to answer a, a very important question, at least one that I've wanted to know the answer to for quite some time. And the question is, do DC to DC chargers for portable power stations, do they destroy your vehicles alternator are they a good idea i think this question is particularly relevant because over the last year you've got mainstream players you know first it was ecoflow coming out with their alternator charger then bluetti with their charger one dji with their super fast car charger and you know the dji one goes up to one kilowatt 1000 watts and so the question is are those dc to dc chargers are they a good idea to install in your vehicle or are they going to destroy your alternator or shorten its life? And you know, this is something that I've seen pop up in online forums over and over again. And the debate ensues, you know, are these DC to DC chargers a good idea to put on your vehicle? And you've got people on both sides of the aisle, essentially. And some are saying, yeah, don't worry about it. They're fine. And then you've got others that are, you know, very strongly saying, hey, these things will destroy your vehicle's alternator, they are not a good idea, don't install them. But with all this discussion, I don't see numbers or data to back up either side. And so I've always wondered, well, what do these DC to DC chargers, what kind of load do they actually put on your vehicle's alternator? You know, I'm kind of a numbers guy, I like to see data, and that kind of shows me the, the full picture. And so guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you real world numbers as I'm driving along here on how my alternator is behaving with and without a DC to DC charger engaged so that I can answer, hey, are they a good idea or are they really just going to destroy your vehicle's alternator? Now, to give you a little broader context, for me, answering that question starts with determining how much excess capacity do you have on your vehicle's alternator. You know, every vehicle has an alternator that's spec'd out to deliver a certain number of, of amps. I'm driving here my 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD. It is a gasser, it's got the 6.6 .6 liter L8T, and it comes with a standard 170 amp alternator. Now, is that big or is that small? Well, I think for an HD truck, that's pretty average, maybe just a little bit on the, the small side. Again, this is a gasser. My understanding is if I had the Duramax diesel, the 6.6 .6 liter, it would come standard with a 220 amp alternator to give you some context. So yeah, maybe 170 is a little bit on the anemic side, but I mean, what does just the, the typical, you know, passive or static amp draw look like while I'm driving around, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of air conditioning. What does that look like on the, the alternator? And like I said, guys, I'm going to show you real world numbers as I'm driving along here. What I discovered is on GM trucks, there is a variable that I can read in through the OBD2 port, and it is the generator F terminal signal variable. My understanding is that essentially is the, the load put on the alternator, you know, what it is outputting in terms of a percent. And so I'm gonna show you all that data, and I'm also gonna show you RPM and vehicle speed and the battery voltage, so we can get a real full picture of, of what it's like as I'm driving around here. And so that's what you're seeing there on the screen capture. You know, right now I've got the climate control set to 70 degrees. It's not that hot out today, it's about 70. And so, you know, there's just a little bit of, of air conditioning going on. And uh, otherwise I've got the radio on, but it's, it's muted, but really not a whole lot, you know, running right now on the truck. And you can see right there is a percent, the alternator's right around 26%, 27%. That's been about what I've observed as I've been driving around, you know, testing it and reading the, the F terminal signal value. It seems on average when I'm up to speed to be right around that 25 to 30% range. So that seems to be kind of the, the static draw on the truck. But what if I come to a, a stop, the engine slows down, 
I'm almost at a complete stop right now. You can see zero miles per hour. The RPM have dropped now to in between 500 and 600. And look at how that percent, the generator F terminal signal jumps up almost to 50%. So I think that really demonstrates, you know, difference between idling when the RPM are lower versus when you're in motion, you know, what that relationship looks like on the alternator. And so obviously if you're idling, the alternator is not going to output as much and that will have an effect if you're running a DC to DC charger. I'm back up to speed here and you can see that that generator F terminal signal drops right back down to about 25%. Now check this out, I'm coming to a stop again and this time while I'm idling, while I'm at a stop, I'm gonna crank the air conditioner up and let's just see what that does to the alternator. So I've got normal air conditioner now, I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the max. And so let's see what that does. Okay, so now we're climbing 56, 57, didn't quite hit seven, uh, 60. Now I'm taking off again. And so notice how the, the RPM increase and that F generator terminal signal drops back down. But what about other typical loads? I mean, what if I turn the temperature here, the climate control all the way down to low so that the air conditioner comes on max? You can see what that does. It increases to about 32, 33%. What about if I turn my headlamps on? They're on auto right now. I'm gonna turn them on. That's gonna raise it slightly. Not a big jump there. What about my wipers? People are gonna think I'm crazy turning my wipers on. It's not raining. But I've got my wipers on max right now. You can see even that puts a slight load on the, the generator. What about if I turn my heated seats on, both the passenger and the driver? Okay, so that puts a load as well. Now I don't have a fully optioned, you know, high trim level truck. This is an SLE, but turning all of those things on at the same time, that kind of gives me an idea of really what the max load is if I were to have all those things running at the same time here. Let me get everything set back to normal here. And now I've reset everything, so I've got the radio on, it's muted, the air conditioning set to a modest 70 degrees. And again, we're back to about that 25% range. That's really where I've seen it as I've been testing it and reading in this F-terminal signal. It seems like, you know, it's typically gonna be around 25% of the alternator capacity. So under normal driving, that means I'll probably have about 75% capacity left to use for a DC to DC charger, but if I start turning on the air conditioner, the wipers, headlamps, things like that, I could be left with as little as 50% capacity. And then of course, if I'm idling, same thing, I'm gonna lose that capacity. So now that I've established the passive or static load without the DC to DC charger running, I'm going to turn on the DC to DC charger. I'm gonna be using the DJI Superfast car charger. That's what I've got installed on, on my truck. And if you didn't catch my previous video where I went over the install and testing, I'll put a card up above and a link in the description below. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on so that the unit starts charging. And let's see what that does to the alternator here. Now this one charges up to a thousand watts. And so let's see what it does here I'm also gonna show you what the DJI unit is doing as well, and it's already up to 1,050. So notice how that generator F terminal signal, that percent has climbed to 55%. Remember before it was about 25 to 30, and with only turning on that DC to DC charger, that being the only change, it jumped all the way up to 55%. We're charging at 1,000. 64 watts, that's really impressive. But this at least gives me an idea of what kind of load that DC to DC charger puts on my alternator. Again, I'm on the interstate right now, and so my RPM are up around 1400, 1500. And so the alternator, you know, is, is probably outputting uh, the maximum amount of power that it can. And yet I'm only using about 50 to, to 60%. And that typically is what I've found as I've been testing it over the last couple of weeks. Usually when I'm at the, the full 1000 watts of charging, I hover right in that 50 to 60% range. But what happens if, just like I did before, I start using more appliances, so to speak, on my truck? Let's turn the air conditioner way down. 
to low on the temperature so it goes up to the max and you can see what kind of impact does that have jumps up to north of 60 percent what if i turn on my my wipers you can see what that does that increases it to about 64 65 percent not too bad right i mean i'm not going north of of 70 percent so that demand on my alternator it doesn't really seem that severe i mean 50 percent right what harm could that do to the the alternator long term right and plus i'm just a weekend warrior i'm not using it every single day you know discharging it and then fully charging the power station back up i'm using it maybe once a week at, at most right i could see where if you're someone who's you know using the power station every day discharging charging back up then yeah you probably want to be a little bit more concerned and maybe that's when you want to you know upgrade to a larger alternator perhaps now i'm going to be coming to a, a stop and i want you to notice what happens as my rpm decrease when i start to idle watch what happens with that percent on the generator f terminal signal because i think this is where it's really interesting to see that relationship between you know idling your rpm and what that does to the alternator so watch here i'm getting down to under a thousand and notice how it is climbing climbing let's see if we hit 80 percent i mean yeah look at that 80 90 percent 93 percent and we're still charging at over a thousand watts so i wanted you to see what happens when you idle because that's where it really puts a significant load on the the alternator and i mean i think this is where you've got to decide what you're comfortable with in terms of the load on your alternator for me personally i start to get uncomfortable when i see that percent you know north of 80. Uh, 80 percent you know use especially if it's for you know an hour two hours at a time that to me seems like that could really take its toll on your alternator especially if you're you know using it on a daily basis you know if it's just once a month probably isn't such a, a big deal but i mean i'm coming to a, a stop again and yeah i mean that, that f terminal signal percent just climbs and climbs and climbs almost up to a hundred percent and so yeah i do think that could really take its toll on your alternator now most dc to dc chargers give you the ability to throttle down how much input is being drawn from the the alternator so i just lowered mine to about 500 watts it was set to a thousand before and so check out what that does now i'm about to start idling here you can see my engine speed is around 600 rpm and so now we're at about 65 percent and I'm charging it just over 500 watts. I'm taking off now, so the RPM are increasing. And you can see now we're much more modest on the, the alternator percent right there, really into the, the 30s, not even getting over 40. So I mentioned that because one thing that you can do if your vehicle's alternator isn't quite up to the task is just throttle down that, that input, right? I mean, 500 watts of, of charging is still pretty fast. Okay, guys, so there you have it real world numbers just like i promised i think based on all the data that i'm seeing i can answer the original question which is again is it a good idea to install a dc to dc charger on your vehicle is it going to destroy your vehicle's alternator and so based on the data that i'm seeing let me just summarize if you're doing regular driving you know cruising along your rpm or between a thousand fifteen hundred and you don't have you know excessive things turned on the vehicle such as you know headlights wipers air conditioner on max all at the same time right just ordinary driving then that dc to dc charger it's it's not going to put an extreme load on your alternator especially when the rpm are are up however if you are idling like i'm doing right now then you can see again it's going to put a more significant load on your vehicle's alternator. I've got the, the charging threshold, the input set down to 500 watts, but you can see it's climbing 65% right there. Imagine if it was a hotter day outside and I had my air conditioner on, uh, you know, I could easily be up there around 100%. So I think that's where you really have to be careful is if you're planning on using a DC to DC charger 
and you're planning on idling, you know, just sitting at a campground, for instance, or sitting in a parking lot to charge up your power station, that may not be a good idea because that is putting a, a pretty, you know, high and arguably excessive load on your alternator. And I don't know if that's a good idea to have it, you know, running at 90 to 100% of its capacity for an extended period of time. You know, I'm no expert there, but for me, when I start seeing it get, you know, 70 to 80% or higher on the load for an extended amount of time, that just doesn't seem like a, like a good idea. But I mean, if you're just doing regular, ordinary driving, like I've been mostly doing today, you're not excessively idling and the RPM are up over a thousand, I really don't see any reason why it wouldn't be a good idea to install a DC to DC charger on your vehicle and you know gain those benefits of being able to rapidly recharge your, your power station. Again, guys, every vehicle is different. You know, all the data that I showed you here is largely based on the size of my alternator in the truck. And so if you've got a smaller alternator or a larger alternator, those numbers, those percentages are going to look different for you. Well, guys, I hope you found this video as interesting as I did. Like I said, it was a question that I've been wanting to answer for quite some time, and I really wanted to see that, that data. If you guys have any questions, definitely drop me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.